This week, episode 256 of Stogie Geeks, the first section, we are going to take some time out and talk about house sticks. And what we mean by that is uh, cigars that are that started off exclusively available in particular cigar shops and how they um, tend to expand within their market. And we're going to talk about the blends and our, our experiences with smoking these house sticks. And then if we... If everything works out technologically, we are going to interview Tony Mendoza. He is a full-time soldier, part-time f- filmmaker, and intense cigar enthusiast. Uh, he's completed his uh, second feature film entitled Life in the Hole. It can be found on Amazon right now. He's got another movie coming out uh, in 2018. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about our sticks of the week. Right here on this week's edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Hat tip, can we play it? Yeah, one more time. Can I hear a. Yes! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the dirt! Guests and friends here in studio, including a regular cast of characters, Mr. Joe Hollywood to my right. How are you? That's awesome. Joe D's here. Rain Man's here. Happy What's going on, I Joe love D? Table discussions. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Episode 256, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stogie Geek Show. I am your host this week, Joe Hozempa, sitting in the hot seat. Helping me out is Joe D. How are you, sir? Very good, man. Happy all, to be here as always. All I got to tell you is welcome home. Mm. That's uh, that's my take to you. You had a very good experience, we've heard, a couple weeks ago. Very exciting, man. Great. Mm. Hellacious week. Very exciting. Absolutely. Put a lot, put a lot of work in. Absolutely. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. Why don't we start and let the listeners know what we are having. Right now we're smoking the Southern Draw Coduelo Fiathorn, Ecuadorian Habano, Rosado Wrapper, Mexican San Andreas Binder, Nicaraguan Filler. Uh, it's a 5x58 box press, Perfecto, and uh, Double San Andreas. And uh, two identical cigars. The uh, the premise with this particular cigar is that no one should be smoking alone. Mm. So uh, two friends, two foes, whatever you got, sit down, enjoy, uh, commensurate on uh, what you know what you think of about that cigar. Absolutely, bring up a valid point. A lot Subtle of, like gentlemen. A lot of will. a lot of the world's problems could be happen mm-hmm. if you turn on any news channel, pick one, and discuss it over a cigar. I'm sure uh, you know the world would be a better place. <laughs> Special stick, I figured, you know, perfect opportunity for uh, the two of us to sit, sit down and enjoy. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Before we leave the series of shows this week, I have, um, last week, um, for episode 255, we had the interview with uh, Robert from uh, Southern Draw. Yep, Robert Holt. And if you've missed that interview, just go to stogiegeeks.com, check it out. It's last week's episode. Riveting interview. Uh, amazing on so many levels. Um uh, business, personal, uh, you know, uh, culture. It was it was a, a, a great interview. So uh, I know this time of year, we're all getting tugged in all different directions. We're shopping. We have to-do lists. Business is getting crazy. It's wrapping up. But if you've missed the Story Geeks episode 255, check it out. Um, and then also in the other segment, I was returning uh, some emails live um, for the Stogie Geeks listener. Little mailbag segment. That had uh, taken the time out to email Joe H at stogiegeeks.com. Um, I wanted to get to two emails, and what happened was I was looking, I was on the set, and I mm-hmm. thought I did them, yep. and then when I got off. So I do, because one of them is, 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 both of them are really interested, and it's funny because when I, dig the, when I did the segment, I started out with the intentions of, returning these two emails first right, right and when the spotlight came on <laughs> and i started going through my motions the next thing you know i was saying okay we'll see you next week and i, and, and I got off the set so i do want to take like a, a, a quick two minutes because um 
I think that the reason why is most of the Stoy Geeks listeners, there is a theme when they email me, and uh, we found a quick navigational workaround for that. So either this segment or either after the next segment or or, or sticks of the week, nice. uh, I do want to return just two quick more because if we do a mailbag again. Most likely it wouldn't happen till um, the last week of January or so because we, we, we got some stuff booked and, and uh, holiday schedules to, to get through and all of that stuff. So uh, And also, I do want to take time out to wish uh, the Stoy Geeks listener, uh, and you can too, you know, uh, whatever holiday you celebrate, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, sure. and, and Happy New Year to, to everyone. Enjoy uh, and be safe. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, 2018. Uh, I can tell you um, that I had originally wanted to release uh, an announcement for this show. I'm still working out the logistics. So um, if you want to sign up for the Stogie Stogie Geeks uh, newsletter, um, all you have to do is go to CigarShed.com, click on the um, sign up for, for the newsletter, and then uh, it'll, it'll go through uh, with the announcement because I expect... That announcement to be made, um, it most likely will be made now with, with the schedule via social media first, uh, and then we'll, we're going to announce it, and I don't want it to be like ex post facto and all that stuff. Right. So um, there you go, and if you want to wish the story, just listen to all the thing. It, it's, uh, As always. It's definitely a reflective time of the year it is. for a lot of people, either in businesses, to say, you know, I, I can't believe that we were carving pumpkins and drinking wine <clears throat> and eating turkey, and here we are already. You know, it's it, it did go by fast. Pulling up with a good cigar, and uh, that's definitely the uh, the best forum to mm-hmm. uh, for reflection. Absolutely. And uh, pull up a chair with a friend. Yes, Enjoy. absolutely. Uh, this cigar, um, it, it, uh, uh, I always compare. <laughs> I always compare to everything to. To what I like, right? right? Compared to the Jacob's Ladder, right? <laughs> like, you, you know it's coming right, right out of my mouth, right? Um, it's certainly milder, but I mean, we're getting, um, I'm, I'm getting um, a, 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 a woodsy cedar note, uh, subtle. Yep. Um, very well balanced so far. So we'll check in on that. What are you getting from this? Absolutely. Well, have you had any of these? This is the first time that I've had one. This is the second one I've had. Okay. Uh, gifted uh, by Mr. Robin Holt, purposely for, uh, for the show to enjoy and uh yeah it's it's a more ramped up flavor profile but typically what you get with the firethorn uh at coco the leather mm-hmm. um it just smokes incredibly well and uh yeah th- it's it's a great stick yep if i had to enjoyable. come up with with an adjective um so far it would be mildly meaty just like how the jacob's ladder right yeah. yep. <laughs> just like how the jacob's ladder has that meatiness to it yep it says a mild component. It's very uh, tops out, yeah. Meaty kind so of that, that medium, medium plus ramps up a little bit towards uh, the end. You'll get some of that. Some of that plus will be kicking in. And what did you pour us to pair with it? A little Jefferson. We've been on a Jefferson kick uh, last couple weeks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Goes out smooth, especially uh, stressful holiday time. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. marriage with uh, the cigar. Jefferson's and and and, and co-hosting together the Story Geek Show. It's a good way to spend the Monday. There it is. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. this segment. Um, we're going to take the time out to talk to you about what cigar shop owners in the industry call house sticks. And what, they, what that usually means is if you go to a certain cigar shop and travel around, right, um, sometimes the uh, owner of the cigar shop had gotten so entrenched in the industry and, and not only enjoyed the industry and, you know, being a retail shop and doing that, yep. they get so entrenched and there's a point that comes up of, hey, maybe I should come up with my own blend or, or maybe I should come up with my own brand. A well, little dabble. You know? Sometimes they're gems, sometimes, uh, you know, it, there's uh, hits and misses, uh, certainly. Absolutely. And, and, and what I like about that, all right, from a business perspective, okay, right? I can't get through, I, I can't get out of my mind, right? And without doing Story Geek Show, well, <laughs> come to think of it, right? <laughs> from a business perspective, any retail shop owner, like any other business, should have multiple revenue streams right. coming in 
um, ideas, <clears throat> streams there. Uh, I know outside of Story Geeks with my business, I always ask for my customers' wish list. In other words, you know, what aren't you good at yet or what aren't you known for yet in your business, your respective business field, right. but do pretty well, you know? And, you know, because that could be a pivot point or, you know, a line of focus and whatnot. Yep. So when we first came up with the idea, of course, me being candid with the audience, that's the first thing that happened in my, to my head. Oh, it's genius, right? You know, <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a great idea. But then we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about the business part. That'll probably come from me, maybe, right? And then Joe's going to take the time out to talk about some, some sticks that he has in mind that uh, he's like used for house sticks. From a consumer perspective, because they, you know, in uh, visiting all these uh, various humanoids and getting outside of the uh, the state a little bit now, I it's one of those things I like to reach for. I like to see what what they have uh, personally to offer. The house sticks sometimes you find some of those gems, and um, you know the migration of you know maybe it was kind of just like a uh, you know an afterthought uh, mm-hmm. initially, but every now and then you're gonna gonna hit on uh, some of those gems, like uh, you know the local shop here at Churchill's. They have the little prov. You know there's some. Mm-hmm. Some, certainly some good sticks. Up, up in uh, New Hampshire last week. Castro's and two guys. They both have uh, numerous sticks. Okay. Um, Do you know well, the names of them? Just, uh, you know, the Maduro option, the Connecticut, but it's Castro's back room. And yep. then um, the, from two guys, they've got several uh, Garofalo sticks. Oh, yeah. Dave, Dave Garofalo, yep. the, uh, the owner of two guys. And I've actually had those. Those, and those. those are well-priced. And we'll get to the Absolutely. To, to the individual stick proportion. That that also factors in that price point, uh, very reasonable, mm-hmm. and uh, just another option for uh, the consumers. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So, what sticks did you ha- specifically have in mind? I mean, I know you had mentioned the Laprov by uh, Churchill Smoke Shop and Lounge that yep. they're located over in East Providence. Um, interesting stick. Uh, have you had it? I have. I, I, I'm actually several boxes in for uh, the Maduro. I okay. think the Maduro plays a little bit, uh, okay. a little bit better, but. Uh, you know, for a cheaper house stick, it's it's not a throwaway by any means. It's mm. very, very enjoyable, constructed well, and I, I think uh, a lot of these house sticks are, are hitting the benchmark for uh, um, you know construction flavor. It's it's a nice option to have, nice mm-hmm. cheap option to have, and supporting the uh, the house, if you will. You know? Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's. I remember when that concept first came up uh i was i was involved within the conversation yep and and it's amazing um do you know which factory it came from or anything like that or no no okay i do so uh uh, so i'll continue um with with that being said i I remember um when uh casada factory nope when 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 black label remember yes uh on a bunch on a bunch of episodes probably the past four or five episodes you have heard from my mouth saying, you know, a, a lot of these, some of these local shops are getting into the newer black label stuff. We have done our research in okay. our stogies of the week. We have been reviewing them, um, you know, especially with the, uh, the the latest and greatest by them locally here, that Santa Morte, yep. right? Like, yep. you know, and, and, and me specifically saying that, you know, this is a, a different profile from them. Uh, and if this is what they're going to come out with, uh, 2018, uh, if, if that's the direction of where they're going, I'm pretty excited, but peel back that couple years ago, I believe it was three off the top of my head. They, they were talking about that. And, um, Brian, the shop owner had a, uh, options, you know, cause when you're in the industry, Yep. You, you, you know, the, all these reps and factories and, and from doing events that you have the ability to go to your door. And um, I, I, the, the profile had done very, very well uh, at that particular store. Right. And so, you know, they, they've done that. And then, um, again, the sales rep or whatever happened internally, there wasn't much of a presence. Sales start to subside. Other companies start to come in. It ends up getting drowned out in the humidor. And then you move on. But, you know, um, and specifically with the Laprov, I remember them talking about the blend. I remember having some some test blends uh, there. He's come up with, with two blends there. Um, and, uh, you know. Not, not to take anything away from the uh, the Connecticut, but for me that Maduro just, uh, it really it really popped. It it didn't, uh, it certainly didn't smoke or, uh, or taste like, you know, uh, any fibers along much. It was a legit stick. Yes. 
Yes, legit stick it, enough to buy a couple boxes, you know? Yeah, it was a legit stick. And you know what I like about it now is, you know, sometimes, uh, at least on a once-a-week basis, probably for the past two or three weeks or, or maybe, you know, maybe three out of the past six weeks, I found myself going back to the prof. Right. And the reason being, I was like, wow, they're really coming into Yep. But the reason why they're coming in is been sitting in the humid off for a couple of years. Oh, uh, you better believe it. You, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and, 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 and it was good. And, and then I remember him coming up with different names and all of that stuff. I'm not going to get into <laughs> to the names. But, you know, and, and then he came up with, with the concept of the Laprov and came there because he's located just a couple of minutes away from the from city of Providence and whatnot. And it's got the silhouette of the city and all of that stuff. And and I, I would venture to say that um, – I know that the Laprov is in uh, a couple of shops locally as well. Yep. And that's the idea uh, of that. And I can tell you, I am at liberty to discuss that uh, Brian LeBeau uh, is, is coming up with a second uh, house stick. Interesting. As well. Nice. Uh, I already know the name. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the name yet um, there. Uh, I, we could bring him on the show uh, if, if he wants to. But uh, I, know, I, I know the name and I know the factory. And it's not going to be black label. It's going to be a different factory. Which, if we get to the Paul Joyal story, there's a different factory there. And I'm sure that right. we will within this segment. So, you know, um, switching factories uh, for a house stick is, isn't, isn't a bad idea. Um, it, it isn't there. It, it, uh, again, um, in regards to product, uh, it's all based upon demand. You know what I mean? Right. So if they put out a house stick and there's a demand, if you're in three, four, five, six shops... And there's even more of, of a demand, and word gets around. Now you might be in 10, 15, 20, 30 shops. Case in point, Paul Joyle, now you're breaching outside of uh, outside of the state. I believe he's up and down the uh, the East Coast from Maine to Florida mm -hmm. and, uh, in numerous shops and uh, numerous blends, numerous sizes. Yeah, it really takes on a life of its own. And, uh, right. Um, for, for me in particular, you know, I was up in New Hampshire there, and uh, the, uh, the Castro Short Maduro is a $4.50 stick. With crazy flavor, um, I couldn't believe. You know, I couldn't believe it. I was um, had to pinch myself. Cocoa, barnyard, and Fruit Loops, which really, <laughs> which, yeah, which that that flavor point I haven't uh, I haven't experienced yet. And I I couldn't believe this was uh, this is a house stick priced at four fifty, and it absolutely delivered on uh, on flavor. I don't I don't know with certainty that it's uh, it's out you know ventured outside of New Hampshire yet. I, I think it might just be uh, locally within. Their shops and a few of the uh, the big boys up there, but mm -hmm. um, it's one to seek out and and, and also uh, you know the point to not discredit house shops in your area. You know if they happen to have that uh, that house blend, give it a peek, give it a try, and uh, you may be uh, pleasantly surprised. Mm. Yeah, I think that um, right now business wise, uh, the barrier to entry is well pre-FDA and all of that. So mm -hmm. a couple of years ago, the barrier to entry was was not an unknown. And um, the barrier to entry was low in order for you to produce your own blend. Right. So uh, ec basic economics would tell you that if the barrier to entry is low, you're going to have more awareness and more opportunity for people to, you know, dare I say, squeeze in their blends into their profile of their humidor come up with the negotiations, figure it out. Um, I can tell you that the process um, has a lot of curveballs. You know, we could we could probably re-interview everyone that we have done uh, here on the Story Geeks for 2017 and talk to them about, okay, the launch of their particular product and what it takes. Because, you know, I remember with, um, with the, in the case of the LaProve, where, you know, you get some sample sticks and you start to, you know, they're, they're just labeled one, two, three, or right. ABC or whatever. Yep. And, and you, you go through that process. So once you pick the blend, like the journey really begins. You know what I mean? Um, there. Because uh, you have to worry about, obviously, um, the label component. How are you going to do the labels? Uh, the box component, which box in presentation uh, within usually any industry, but uh, within the cigar industry, you know, because certain factories have access to a certain type style of boxes. Uh, then you have to make conscientious decision: Do you want to bundle them, right? Because you could not, you could have a house stick right. that was bundled. I know when I owned a retail shop, we didn't have a house stick, but we had a stick and a rep 
who uh, served us very well, and we asked them um, if we could use this as our house stick. Right. And they was like, oh, yeah, if you, you know, this is the process, blah, blah, blah. You know, can we do our blends? Um, can, can we put our bands on it? Can we not? We could get the logistics. But we had made a decision at the time back in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, to just go with the bundles. Right. Now, I do know with the bundles that off the top of my head, the uh, two guys are in bundles. Right. You know, and... There's a whole argument within the humidor. We could we can bring in any retail manager here um, of any shop, you know, on Main Street USA. It doesn't matter. The bundles might not sell as well as the boxes because of presentation. And some might, shops they do. Sometimes, you know, right. some, some shops in particular. I'm not gonna not gonna name, but uh, they move very well. They move very <laughs> they move frequent. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, it maybe it's just uh, uh, instead of a particular shop, guys are reaching out for uh, two or three premium sticks in a day if they happen to. Have that kind of time and uh, luxury to afford a few, or maybe it's that one premium stick and you reach for a house, house cigar and uh, you know bundled stick mm-hmm. uh, from there to space it out. Um, you know, it's up to the uh, consumer, but at the end of the day, it's nice to have options and uh, choices. Oh yeah, I you know I I see uh, you know another uh, another avenue too. It's 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 an alternate path for uh, shops to get involved. Maybe uh, some of the larger companies, maybe they have a. You know, lesser stick that's been sitting for a while, tabled. They weren't able to bring it to market. This is a nice avenue. They can uh, they can get that stick out in the hands of the consumer, and um, you know it's in a nice partnership with the uh, with the shop as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, nice little uh, little partnership. Both I see you know I see it as a win for both. Mm-hmm. Get you know get that stick out, get it in the consumer's hands, and uh, enjoy, and at a nice price point too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. You know. Um, you know, uh, and, and when, when you bring in the business component, mm-hmm. I've had an experience with an outside of state, meaning outside of Rhode Island state shop yep. that was looking um, to take their house stick and stop putting it into um, different retails outside of the state that, that they were in. And the stick that I'm uh, speaking uh, with in regards to this is the Taza de Jose. Okay. which Spanish is translated for a cup of Joe's, which if you go to a cup of Joe's dot com, um, it's all tied in. Okay. That is Queensbury tobacco and pipe up in right. Queensbury, right? Queensbury, New York. Yep. yep. And they came up with the Taza de Jose. Uh, it would, they had a Connecticut blend and then they have a Habano blend. And again, they were looking for a penetration outside of the state and, and we were able to successfully start that process and, and procure that. And, you know, again, the shop, that's another component business wise that the shop owner has to be has to be aware of of you know that it can take on another expense and and take on so you know it's really up to the shop like you said with with the ones up up in new hampshire um that that just stay to a couple shops there and then do that there could be word of mouth you know go pay distributor or go through all that process right. and and if it gets out there but what what i did like about the example with the Taza de Jose is that a lot of people, well, first of all, some people were, were confused because my name was Joe uh, and, and, and they thought it was my stick. So I had to jump through that hurdle. No, no, right. no, this is the, you know, <laughs> but, but also what, what I liked about it is um, the label. If you go to Queensbury Tobacco and Pipe, it has a silhouette of a gentleman smoking pipe, right? Because right. it, 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 they're a pipe distributor yep. and then they have a cigar shop up there as well. Um, and then they did the same silhouette, same guy, just with a cigar. And the label is connected to the website. Gotcha. So gotcha. if you want to uh, you want to talk about kind of bang for your buck. Business standpoint, solid expan- move right there. Expanding, yeah. expanding your market, you know, you, yep. you're, you're capturing that. You can go specifically, even though it was separate from their pipe selling and pipe distributing and, and, and their cigar shop site, marketing-wise, they can be intertwined. But I think that that was a very powerful move. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, when I had my uh, cigar radio show uh, that was played here in the province metro over on, on AM radio called C- uh, Cigar Club Radio, I had the opportunity to interview Paul Joyle. Uh, and Paul Joyle w- was telling us the story. Um, and, of course, you know, just like any other Story Geeks interview, okay, 
let's talk about the name, yep. right? Yep. Let's, uh, let's get into the business structure. Yep. You know, how, how did, you know, Paul Joyo come up with, with you know, the Grotto series? Jay Grotto, the Jay Grotto yeah. series. Yep. And then he has three of them mm-hmm. now, right? He has three lines um, there. And like you said earlier on, it, it, it's doing very well. Now, he's taken it to where, you know, not only is he a shop owner, and um, now he does his events with his sticks. And, and I know he's goes, on the road, too. He's putting in that time. There. Oh, yeah. and, and if you're thumbing through some of the, the major publications, he's there. He is. You know, he's yep. there. You know, so if, if uh, for the Story Geeks listener, non-Rhode Island based, right, um, for the Story, Story Geeks listener, we're, we're, we're talking specifically about the uh, Jay Grotto. Um, he has the Jay Grotto Silk. Yep. And he's got the Anniversario, and they're all under the Jay Grotto label. They're all very good. Yep. <laughs> Which, yep. You know, yep. And uh, you think there'd be uh, you know, the possibility of being a being a miss in there? And they're all they're all very solid. Yeah. Do you know how he came up with the name? Uh, no. No. Me. No. Well, in my I was only going from from my interview with him, right? I'm guessing the Grotto, just that you know that kind of uh, perfect spot to be isolated and have have a cigar with friends and. No? Sorta. Okay. Sorta. Uh, the only reason why I'm speaking about this is because I've had an interview, so I am not putting words in Paul yep. Joyle's mouth or anything like that. It's archived on my website, so you can go back and check it and all of that stuff, right? Um, apparently, Paul had an area in his house uh, on, on, in the backyard, yep. and uh, his, his, these are all his words. His, his, his wife was into gardening and all that stuff, yep. and so she made the yard. Very, very nice. Yes. And after the shop would close, like most <laughs> every other cigar shop, <laughs> when it closes, it doesn't really close, right? right? Yeah. Uh, there, there are a certain group of guys or gals or crew who hang out with the shop owner, either, you know, doors locked, shop owner there, or, hey. Migrate to, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. They would migrate over to Paul's house and after the shop was closed and, and do that there. And 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 a couple of his, his friends from his close sphere was saying, wow, you're like, you know, going to your house is, is, is like going to a grotto, like Perfect. go, go into that. And then, Perfect. so they said, why don't you just name it Jay Grotto? You know, you get the J, the Joyles, this, yep. that, you know what I mean? Cause, cause I asked them, you know, and, and, and if you think about it, you know, <laughs> if, if, it, uh, when I think of the new name of the potential, uh, second stick that that's going to come out of Churchill's in La Prada, that's how maybe, maybe some of the names come out. You nice. know what I mean? Like, nice. hey, you should call it this. You know, sometimes you know the stars align, and you're like, that's it, that's the name, and that and it's there. And I can tell you that from a marketing perspective, when when you're trying to market your product, um, sometimes a name it just feels right. Like that's you, it's just like a feeling. It speaks to you, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 I guess that was the the methodology. And then he had ran into other um, stories about how he was going to name the silk. You know, and then yep. he, he had done that there. And and then again, it it there was some other uh, some other stories that I'm I'm not 100. percent I I couldn't deliver that story with 100 percent certainty, so I'm not. But it's along and, those lines. Like, and actually, like, Paul's uh, you know well uh, intertwined with you know the history and the Stogie Geeks, and uh, certainly viewers can go back in the you know uh, pre- all the previous episodes uh, when he's been on just do a search and uh, uh, get that full history there. I, I'd be remiss if I didn't also add in the uh, the 724. Uh, Kirk Kendall stick. I was going there too. Up in New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Twi- yeah. Twin smoke shop. And that 724, uh, numerous sizes and blends have absolutely re- you know, penetrated outside of the New England market. <clears throat> All of the place rated. Incredible stick. That Lancero is, uh, is one, of the, you know, one of those favorites for me that I migrate to. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, the Stogie Geeks listener, um, we. W- we would love to hear from your local shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what we can do is if you email Joe H at stogiegeeks.com, put in the subject house stick, maybe from your local shop. And if there's a website, then great. They're on top of it. <laughs> if right. there's not a website and there's maybe a Facebook or however, if you could let me know what the house stick is and, um, you know, if, if they're available for purchase online or... or yeah, but to find the way over here to we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, Stogie Geeks. Well, well, not only that, <laughs> we could post it on the wiki site. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, and just put like a house stick list. So maybe, you know, the, 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 the Stogie Geeks listener can, can kind of interact. Because, again, I, I do feel that business-wise, okay, once you get it in your shop 
and say it does well and it builds demand, the next logical step is to get it next door yep. or next door. And so business-wise, you want to take the path of least resistance. You want to take the path of, um, you know, uh, uh, cost effectiveness, True. right? Yep. So they may be hyper local. So you may have a, um, a, a local shop that has a house stick that we never even heard of, right? Email it to us. I'll get them all formatted somehow in order. We'll do bullet points. We'll do a section because I, I you know, I would love to try some. You know, I would love to say, hey, this is from Oregon, or this is from California, or this is from there. From there. And then, you know, if, if, if the shop owner wants to, um, you know, if, if they're able to have online purchases, who knows? It just, it's just, it, it's, 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 it's a good collective audience because um, where I personally search for house sticks and is within my travels. That's, I was just going to bring that up. When okay, I, yeah. When I, uh, you know, whenever I uh, migrate outside of New England or even, uh, you know, branch out in some of these other states here um i look for that i look for shops you know we all look for shops mm -hmm. you land at the airport or wherever you are where am i going next first stop cigar lounge and uh and check it out but i, I like to have that that information ahead of time too and you know let's see if they happen to offer uh that house stick see if it's got uh uh you know get some legs to it mm -hmm. you know if it's uh, migrated outside of uh, their own given shop and in, in region um it's exciting you know yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, and some of them come from uh, bigger factories, oh, yeah. you know, so right. it's not, you know, it's not, you know, that they're, 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 they're coming from, from bigger factories. I'm, I'm trying, you know, to, to diligently walk without the yeah, inside yeah. baseball, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. But so, you know, realistically speaking, you know, it's, uh, for example, the uh, Alec Bradley factory mm -hmm. rolls a lot of house sticks for some 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 other companies right you know right. uh uh aj fernandez as well you know and and so you know if if you're if if you're sitting in your shop and your shop owner um always wanted to do that then you know depending on the activity of the rep and all of that stuff and also the relationship with the shop owner with the factories or the relationship with the factory owners with the manufacturer and in and, and, and there they could get it done um, pretty quickly. The stogie you, you know, can me want, they, like, I don't just pick out the uh, the stick. I, I want a little bit of history behind it. I mm -hmm. want to know where it's, you know, who are they uh, in business with? Where, where's it being made? Is it a prominent shop? Um, you know, was there, uh, was there some history and um, a long thought process? Was it, you know, 10 years in the making? Or they just kind of reached out and uh, it all came together uh, perfectly at that time? Um, you know, it, it's interesting and uh you know having that having that knowledge and education base behind it uh as to you know more enjoyable experience yeah absolutely you know and then you know like i said bringing it back business wise right yep. you have to make a decision you know with, with anything you know do you want to go far or wide you know what i mean do right. you want one cigar shop and load up your humidor and have it be a mecca mm -hmm. or do you want two or three cigar shops in a geographical area and expand it and, and, and do that there. So sometimes it, it's not up to you. Sometimes it's so, it, well, it's it's so <laughs> legit that they can't help but reach outside of that shop. Right. Which right. is incredible. Incredible. Right. And you know, it's it it's uh you know, I know off the top of my head that uh Crux was that way. Right. Um there. We, we we've had an episode with uh Casey uh uh Hogan. Hogan, yep. Uh from from Crux. That was a couple episodes back. Two fifty one, I think. Okay, right. That was in a day, so I would call him Rain Man. Uh. Right. Um <laughs> You know, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, Kurt Kendall, mm -hmm. right? He owns uh, twin cigar shops up there. Yep. And and then uh, has has his own label uh, there, and his his label does well. You know, and 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 it's in a lot of places here in the Northeast. I'm not, I don't know what his his gig is outside of the Northeast, but you know, he's out there. I'm not sure. Yeah, the extent of uh, the reach, but it's uh, it's one of those well known sticks that in the biz. Uh, Everybody migrates to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I see Paul Joel doing the uh, doing the same thing with that that Jay Grotto. Yeah, yeah. I I I mean I, I think it's it's a it's a smart move. Um, it it it, it can it can it, if you've taken the time and the liberty to come up with a a good stick, um, and 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 there's enough demand behind it, it could be a very good uh, advertising tool 
for exactly. for your business. Just gonna say, if nothing else, it's gonna drum up solid business and conversation and uh, point you right in right in that direction of you know Mr. Jason Van Shop mm-hmm. or Twins or uh, two guys where you know wherever you're at. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Now, now here comes a hard question, right? Um, most since the barrier to entry seems to be lower, right? And yep. again, I'm leaving FDA out of the out of the equation for now because we are going to get to right. that, right? Yep. But you know, um, where I think I don't want to use the word negative, but where I think that um, where some might make a decision too hastily mm-hmm. is when they say, oh, I'm going to come out with a Connecticut, right? So they say, okay, I'm going to come out with a Connecticut, Connecticut blend, blah, blah, blah. And they go through the motion. It's great packaging. It's great name. People like it in a local shop. But here is a, a pushback outside of your local shop from yes. a business perspective. And the pushback is, okay, great. Now, you, however you market it, you either go through a distributor or you bang on doors yourself and, and travel within an hour radius from your shop, however you want to do it, right? Now, you're another 8 to 12 dollar Connecticut. Now you're competing with, uh, on a shelf. with the same brands you're trying to push. Absolutely. Right. You're, yeah. you're, 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 you're another 8 to 10. You got to look at it from not your shop's perspective, right? Right. right. You, 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 you're another 8 to 10, 8 to 12, right? Mm-hmm. Which is the price point range i think with some of these sticks you know some of them can can get into that four dollar range sure but you know um what do you do then these are questions i would love to have answered from uh future episodes maybe we can we can work (laughs) out lining some of these guys up and uh you know i'd love to hear it right from their mouth yeah well i mean off the top of my head i i could not speak for for stop speaking for people but i do know some people in the industry who've had house blends in that they've released the Connecticut second or third, right? You know what I mean. Right. Like, oh, by the way, you like you like my my X or you like my Y. Um, by the way, we decided to go with a Connecticut then, and then did that. I think strategy. Yeah. I I think that realistically speaking, that's a smarter move if the shop wants to take it out of his or her shop. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, yep. because because so if, if it has walking legs first before you breach that, you know, and certainly that Connecticut market is, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a different market all on its own, and uh, but you know, a lot of the guys that typically smoke those Connecticut's, they might not migrate out to some of the uh, some of the heavier sticks, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, now if you supply them with, you know, an ample tasty option right in that price range, maybe even better. Now, uh, yeah, now now you're kind of battling. You're going nose to nose with. Uh, some of the sticks you're, you're generally trying to push every day. Mm-hmm. But if it's in your shop, I think that they would go to your stick at least for a try one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Of yeah. course. I mean, right. you know, yeah. you go to the, say, you know, say you go to the same shop geographically, you, you, you go two, three times a week, once a week, whatever. After a while, you, you're, you're most likely bound to um, try that stick. But outside of your shop, the, the competition can be can can be pretty fierce. So then you say, okay, well, let me separate it. I'm going to go with a Habano. I'm going to go with a Maduro. Or I'm going to go with, with. Would you reach out to that that house stick in another location aside from uh, you know, the shop where it all started from? I don't know. It's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty good to uh, to move that needle. It's going to be a compelling story, right? I think a it has to be a compelling story. Uh, I think it has to be a good stick, which. I mean, let's face it. When 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 we even when we do sticks of the week and review, you know, well, what what's a good stick to Joe Hosempa might not be a good stick to Joe D. Absolutely. Or yep. Paul, you know, or right. or the guest. You know right. what I mean? Right. Uh, and stuff like that. that. That's why we we it, that's what's that's what's what's great about you know uh, uh, the obvious is everyone has passion for the industry. We get it. Very subjective. You know? um, sure. But 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 you know. You, you, to release with the Connecticut, I think first, if you want to stay within your town, sure, it's it's cool. Yep. You know what I mean. Yep. But then again, when you start talking about the marketing component, it, it, people know you're in the town. It's a bold move. You bold know? move, sir. But when you try to go with the other stuff, um, with 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 with, with an alternative blend, um, the the stakes are a little higher. 
in the building the demand is 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 pretty higher mm -hmm. you know and then you also you also have the uh, skew argument you know like if you take 724 is it a bunch of skews ton of skews you know what i mean like you know so so you know and, and when he released this thing it's a lot different than some of the other examples that that we have given and again it gets back to the business argument. Do you want to go long or do you want to go wide? Well, I was just up there. There's a case or two <laughs> dedicated solely to uh, 724. And I, I feel if I had canvassed the entire shop while I was uh, a couple hours, you know, I was there up mm -hmm. in the, uh, uh, the Londonderry location, um, it might have been half. Might have hmm. been half of the patrons in the shop with that 724. Now, that, that doesn't I mean that's the only stick they're smoking. It just happened to be, you know, very prevalent. That day, it's in their hands. Maybe it's like we, we were talking about earlier. Maybe one of two, one of three. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it, interesting. It, that, it really fascinates me, the, uh, the house sticks. And especially when they're, uh, they're tasty. Especially when they're good ones. Now I'm going to take you through another journey that could blow your mind. Okay. Might not, right? But when we're talking specifically with the 724, for me and my rotation, that's at least a once a week smoke. Absolutely. Different sizes, different blends, different yep. things, uh, different skews yep. that the local shops here have to offer. Right. Right. Um, what happens? Because I, it, 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 I'm just, I'm literally just thinking about this now. Yep. What happens when the consumer forgets about the fact that that's a house stick, and that's just a stick that I like? Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. Like because yeah. because I look at it cuz I look at it cuz it just popped into my head like okay, I I toggle I I uh they have the factory 57. Yes. Is that that, yep. that is that the latest yep. one? Okay. The factory 57. <sighs> I like it. Like not going to lie. Like like it. Didn't take time out to thoroughly review it yet on sticks of the week. Right. You know, uh trying the different sizes. Uh I like it. When I'm delivering to the Stoic Geeks listener, hey, I've tried three sizes of this, or I've had tried two sizes of this, yep. as opposed to, you know, tried it, hated it, tried it, like, whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Excellent I, point. I'm, so, you know. I personally don't, uh, I personally don't, when I come across that, you know, that Jay Grotto in uh, various shops, that 724. Um, that's another, that's it, another it, example. It is, it is not in my mind at all that it's originated as a house stick. It, it's gained such legs. Stands alone on its own, and it's become uh, like you said earlier. It, it's a rotational stick. Yes, yep. right, right, you know? right. And uh, and you know, and that will prompt you to you know. Of course, you'll have your favorites you initially, initially tried, but that's going to prompt you to try uh, new offerings, various sizes, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it, it's right in the ro regular rotation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I hadn't thought about that till uh, till this point. No, so. I, I just uh, honestly, <laughs> we're going through. Um, well, I you know, we're going through, and I'm and I'm saying like you know. Two perfect examples right, right there too. Like I don't think like wow, like the, you know the Jay Grotto is is, is Paul Joyal stick and maybe, maybe we're spoiled and, being and, up in this and, area that we <laughs> we kind of have a right. multitude of uh, legitimate house sticks in play. Uh, I that listener feedback as well. If we get the uh, the listeners to uh, contribute, I, I want to know what else is out there. Is it th those prominent house sticks? Well, see, now in I'm play? going off on a tangent, but I think we'll, we'll probably safely end it at the, after this tangent. Yep. Right. It's kind of like, you know how you watch the History Channel and you're like, is there any life out there? <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> seriously, right? Yeah. No, because, because I am sure <laughs> through technology, if we were to interview someone in all 50 states, if we're able to coordinate this, yep. they probably, I would venture to say that 88% of them Strong. Yep. have a story just like us yep. of a... Uh, uh, I don't want to use the word boutique. I want to use a house stick yes. that became a household name, like some of the bigger names in their region. I love it. Where oh, they yeah. don't think of it, and it, it's like wow, like you know what I mean? Because that that is uh, I, first of all, I would love to get my hands on some of those sticks, you know, just from from a standpoint. Because you know, if you're out there as a, as a Stogie Geeks listener, and you know, here we are throwing names out like Kurt Kendall from 724 or uh, Paul, Paul Joyle from the uh, Jay Grotto series. If there's a version of that within your land and within your world, in your universe, because, you know, 
I don't have the luxury to, you know, hang out in shops down in Texas or Atlanta or, or, or all of that stuff. Yep. Right? If, if 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 there's a version of that, this is the forum. Bring it to the table. You know, Let's hear about. Bring it. it. We 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 yeah. we'd love to hear from you. You can start that by uh, Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. I will share the email with Joe D. Uh, if you're technically inclined, if you put a little comma with the after the emails <laughs> right you you can email two of us at once right <laughs> you can email joe h at stogiegeeks.com and joe d at stogiegeeks.com and it, you know it, it please supply a link um of something even, even if it's, if they're not on a website or something like that please give us a facebook give us some sort of a reference so you know we could probably place a call and i'd, I'd, I'd like to continue to like to to check in with the story geeks audience on this i see this as a uh, a future episode for sure yeah oh it's, yeah it's, yeah like it's when, a great topic yeah great you know topic. and and because there has to be you know what i mean it's like it's kind of like getting back to the history channel <laughs> like you know, this can't be the most intelligent planet. <laughs> All you're gonna do is watch any news. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like something has to be out there. You know <laughs> what I mean? I find it hard to believe that all the coolest cigars happen just in somebody our is tickling keys at home right now. They can't wait. To, <laughs> can't wait to let us know. They're yelling at the screen. You let, know, let us know. We want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely for sure. <laughs> I, th- I think um, you know. I, I think that this uh, this conversation. Uh, for for this house stick segment uh, is definitely a to be continued. Mm-hmm. You know for sure. Where are we at with the cigar? This cigar, uh, I'm still enjoying the the uh, meatiness. I know we're not paying as much attention to it given the uh, the, the diligence, but uh, the cigar is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's like I said, I'm 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 getting that that mild median uh, meatiness, very tasty. Right. Um, Thank you to Mr. Robert Holt, chipping us off. Yeah. Take care of the boys. It's 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 very enjoyable. I love the concept of they sell them in dual. Explain that again. Code Duello. Yeah, it's meant to be spoke, smoked, uh, you know, with someone else and you compare and contrast, settle the differences, smoke like gentlemen. Uh, it pains me that this particular stick, and this is also available in the, uh, the kudzu, uh, did not gain tremendous market traction uh, because they are ridiculous. They're ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Limit, limited, oh, so it's it's the size production. in the kudzu, right? Okay. Uh, yep, two uh, two two different sizes, okay. uh, kudzu and the firethorn, mm-hmm. and uh, it just it it plays well. If if you like those two particular sticks, these are ramped up, more flavorful. Uh, you know, I, perfect smoking format. The uh, the double per, uh, perfecto. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's awesome. A win. Yep. Awesome. I like it. I like it. Do you want me to answer my emails now, or, or do you want to wait till another segment? No, let's bang it out. You let's want to go. bang it out? Yeah. Then we'll be more organized. When we, all right, all right. Yeah. Okay. Because the, the uh, I, last... I, I think it's a fun segment. Get no. it to that mailbag. Yeah, no, you know? I, I do. I, I, I think it's because it, I was like, oh, I totally have to uh, do this. Okay. Now, baseline, right? Uh, last week, episode 255, uh, I did a quick mailbag yep. before our Robert Holt interview with Southern Draw Cigars. And I was I was answering uh, some listener feedback emails. By the way, all listener feedback email uh, Joe H or Joe D now because he is available at StogieGeeks uh, Stogie And um, if you want to email us both, you 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 can do that too. Um, and there were two interesting emails that I wanted to get to, and I didn't get a chance to. And I promised myself I would. Okay, this one comes from uh carl whoops hold on because my email is coming in now uh, carl with a k or a c k oh. right <laughs> carl s right i i won't give the full name but i'm trying to be like <laughs> honest, right carl uh carl s emailed me three times oh, right wow. he emailed me three times thank you for the emails i did get them all i thank did you. respond to them all and <laughs> his third time he used three question marks after it. Oh, wow. He's, right? yeah, he's, he's so, adamant. Uh, Carl, I am not avoiding you, okay? <laughs> Carl is I, not messing around. Let's go. I, I am not avoiding you. And Carl has asked me all three times for the same thing. And I've gotten permission from the first time, and then I responded to him, and then it was like, well, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? So Carl, L, Carl S. writes, Joe, <laughs> when are we going to get a tour of what's inside Paul's humidor. Oh, nice. So, nice. cameraman, can you shine a little thing on <clears throat> Joe D? Okay. Behind Joe D is Paul's humidor. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I spoke to Paul. Okay. This thing's probably about six feet tall. Okay. 
Um, I spoke to Paul. We are going to do an episode, call S. I promise. I'm trying to get this done during the month of January. I will flash you an email back of when this is going to happen, right? Um, we're, 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 we're ready to do it. It's just logistically, um, I don't know how we're going to bring all of the sticks out um, there. Uh, so I, I don't know if we're going to pick out sectional things <clears throat> and give you a tour or if we're going to have Jody get up and down or, or it's something. Oh, you but, want to see me work. <laughs> but let, let me tell you something. If, if, if Going through Paul's humidor, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, Treasure trove. It, yeah. it, 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 it's amazing of what's in there. Uh, I've also had some Story Geeks listeners who emailed me back. They were able to find the Nat Chicos mm. uh, there from, from my n- numerous mentions of them uh, and, and track them down and whatnot. So uh, one of the things we got to do is uh, figure out. Quick idea. I'm thinking maybe we grab you know, one, one, two, three items, stack it up in between, showcase it uh, maybe at the beginning or the end of. Uh, Each uh, segment. Yeah, each segment, just give them a little, little something, a little That's uh, a little good peak. idea. That's because I'm thinking about it. Like, you don't want to get it's up. Nice talking point. Get it's up, on see display. a blank thing, come back. Look, this is the, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the, the uh, 2013 EP Creel short runs, uh, which are banging in oh, there man. right now. Yep. <laughs> right? Uh, what yeah, shelf? Look, what shelf? Uh, the, the, <laughs> that, those are the second shelf yeah. from the top on the left-hand side. Nice. Right, right? I could go through the Rolodex, but I'm sure you want... And then we also go want to get another camera so when we, we shine it, it'll go on the actual stick. So the Story Geeks listener can at least pause the video, see the label, True. do his or her research, and yep. then get that there too. So Good point. we have to work that out with the crew. My goal is to have that happen by January. Um, that will be on a Story Geeks episode. It'll pro- I, I like the theme version. So take a little section out of all the three segments to actually do it, and and then and then do that there. The listener's can... going to be pirating the uh, the humor with us. <laughs> <I love laughs> you it. know, yeah. uh, you know, I I had thought of dragging the cameras and and sitting us like sitting Indian style. Um, <laughs> sitting in the style in front of the humidor, <laughs> but I don't think that would make for a good podcast. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you, you'd have to be like a true stogie geek, yes. or like Kyle, who's chomping at the bit, right? Oh you know, man! Because it did start with with Kyle. <clears throat> all kidding aside, and and this is the kind of dialogue that I love to have with the stogie geeks listener. Carl, thank where, you. Where, where Kyle's like, take a picture of Paul's humidor. Take a picture. Okay, is what's the name of it? So I'm like, okay, that's the second name. Oh, it's the name yep. of it, right? So I'm doing research, trying to find the name. You know what I mean? I come up unsuccessful. You know, well, where do you get it? Well, that's, you know, the, you know, and, and, and you're like, okay, okay. And then, you know, and the funny thing is um, that is not his whole humor. No, which, no. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, Probably going to multiply by five could, at his house. So it could be like a quarterly thing. <clears throat> um, there, uh, I'm not going to task Paul with having an inventory list. Well, the good news he gave us the uh, gave us the word that he's going to be rejoining the show, uh, you know, shortly after the uh, first of the year, and uh, the listeners going to have uh, quite a few, quite a few, quite a few tasty comments and uh, questions for him. And yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, <clears throat> Carl, um, I did put it out to production just now. It's going to be in the mix for January. Joe D, please keep us on task for that. Keep your eyes well, peeled. Right? Oh yeah, we'll get right? it done. We'll We're gonna do that. And then the other one, this I thought was was uh, a pretty neat one here. Uh, thanks for my professional. Okay. Um, oh, I did not. Um, Carl sent me four emails. <laughs> this is this is. Oh wow. Okay. See, well, Carl, you're a very patient man. Thank you. Thank right? you, girl. Uh, I was like, wait a minute, that's not Carl too. No. Carl, S, w. same yeah. email, right? <laughs> Carl sent me four, right? But in reality, he's asked me this again, so and he sent me five total. But okay. Three on the humidor and, and one on this. But Carl brings up a very good point, which at first when he tasked me, I was like, oh, boy, how am I going to do this? Because I have not been on every single Story Geeks episode. Right. But Carl wrote back in September, but I did respond to him <clears> pre-September, <throat> right? Carl S. wrote, Joe, thanks for getting back with me. I'm a big fan of the show, and I'm working on a project with the Story Geeks podcast of adding all the Oasis cigars mm. to my collection to smoke through. 
Nice. Nice. Now, this was the second email because he said, thanks for getting back to me. His first email was, I need a list of all the Oasis cigars from Story Geeks ever. And I'm like, oh, boy. Oh, 250 <laughs> plus. We're at 256 now. I'm like, oh, boy. That's, but yeah. this came to me. I don't know how it came to me. I'm, I'm fascinated by it because it's, techn- it's technological. You better believe it, yeah. Okay, Carl. And for the Story <clears throat> Geeks listener. Challenge accepted. Listen at home. I have a quick and easy way for you to find out how we have critiqued all of the Stoey Geek cigars, okay? All you have to do is you log on to stogiegeeks.com, click on any, go to the Stogie section, click on any cigar that was an Oasis rating, okay? And then under the name, there are tags. And usually the tag says Joe Hozempa, Joe D. Uh, some of them were from uh, Coop at the time. Some of them were from Mark Stogie Santa at the time. Right. Some of them were, Paul. and, and, and uh, Paul at the time. No. Thank you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Leave everyone else. Right? Uh, and, and some of them that they're there. And then, I, and, and how this came to me was when I was posting them, um, I usually put four tags on it. The first tag is what the cigar is. Right. Right. So you can find out like the name, and it'll come up with ones in the name. And and then the other one is the rating. I always put it in the Stogies section. Paul puts his on either both the Stogies or in the regular feed. Obviously, he owns the show, so yep. they, they, there you go. Uh, and then, um, so I put mine in the Stogies section, and then I give the rating. And the rating is is the point of the this is the point of the email. The rating, you'll be able to click on the rating. Nice. So if you go find any cigar that was an Oasis on StogieGeeks.com. Okay, so you go to stogie, stogiegeeks.com, click on Stogies, find a cigar that was an Oasis, Carl, specifically, click on the little tags right underneath the name that usually have my name, Paul's name. Well, there wouldn't be any Oasis with my name, but right, <laughs> right, uh, you know, uh, cl- click on that, and that'll give you whatever tag you, you click on. So if they click on Joe H, it's all the cigars that Joe H is rated. If they click on Paul Azadorian, it's all the cigars that Paul Azadorian is rated. Carl, speaking to my uh, my forte, I'm a, I'm a stats geek. I am in the process of backloading. So when when I joined Stogie Geeks back in uh, episode 221, I'm in the process of backloading all those all those cigars that I've personally reviewed. Some of those, you know, I've got a couple uh, Oasis ratings in there as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, give me a couple weeks couple weeks i promise they'll be in there and uh and I'll, i'm very curious i i want to know i, I want to know I, I might even do some you know my own uh you know what you could do side. you know what you could do i dare shooting off the hip right rekindle yourself with the visit mm. and see if the rating still 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 changed as your palate changed. well that all right so that because then you could do okay uh <laughs> pre-episode 221 there's, there's some psychic work going on that was my uh my notion for uh 2018 I'm gonna get back into it six months, you know, six months, eight months uh, removed. Revisit some of those stakes, see if we're, in, you know, we're in the same uh, same point. And uh, and also, you know, there's always gonna be plenty of new sticks. There's new new cigars popping up all the time. We're always gonna be reviewing, but those uh, revisitations of previous cigars, mm-hmm. that's fun, and that's you know, that's a great uh, uh, fun point for the listener to go back and you know, are we still on point where we're. Uh, where we were originally, so mm-hmm. yeah. if you need help, just pick up the cigars. I'll review them with you. Nice. Right there, you go. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. Next section of episode two fifty six is coming up in a little bit. We're gonna take a quick break. <laughs> 